Today, Sayadaw would like to speak about how to do the walking meditation, how to observe going from uh, a grosser level down to a more refined level. When we go from a sitting posture into a standing posture, whether, whether it's because the time is up or because we don't want to continue sitting for some reason, we shouldn't do it suddenly. We should start from observing the intention to stand up and then we should observe the hands, one hand after another, we move them so we, we note the intention to move the hand, to change the position of the hand note the intention to move and then the moving and we apply mental energy and focused aiming so that we can follow the movement that we make and we support the body with the hands stretch out the legs one by one change the position of the legs one by one until and then shift the weight so that all our weight is on our arms and our legs. We have to put our mind on the entire body when we observe standing up because only then will we know how the supporting arms or the supporting legs become uh, t uh, s stiff or tense. We need to stand up slowly, not suddenly, uh, gradually straightening up and when we've straightened up, adjusting the clothes, these movements have to be observed. And when there's no more movement needed to be made, then we put our hands together, either in front or in back. And then we start to make steps. So every time we make a step, the right step or the left step, the mind should be with the movement of the leg exactly. And this is in accordance with what is described in the Mahasatipatthana Sutta. When we sit, we sit for at least an hour and then so that we can um, we can walk with a collect so that we can continue to sit with a collected mind. We do walking after sitting, so we need to do the walking also for an hour. We should. This is the instruction to sit for an hour, walk for an hour. So we should do as instructed. And we stand up when we uh, start from a standing posture. We should stand up straight. Just like we need to be up, upright when we do the sitting, we also need to keep our spine upright when we do the walking. And although the spine is upright, the eyes should be cast down. And Sayadaw said four, about four feet in front of you. You should be able to limit your vision by casting your eyes down. And then uh, make a right step and make sure that the observation, the awareness of the right step is, uh, goes along with the stepping. And then make a le left step so that the mind follows the stepping. If we're going to walk for an hour, then we start at the grossest level of just observing right step, left step, right step, left step for about 20 minutes. And we do it carefully so that at the moment of the step, we apply effort and focused aiming so that there is steadfast observation. In the Buddhist texts, it's said that one step is made up of six parts. But at the start of practice, we don't need to observe these six parts. 
we start with the simplest way to observe, which is to observe left step and then right step. As Sayadoji said a few days ago, that when we start learning, we need to begin with a, with a few lessons that are easy. And the easiest thing to do is to observe left step and then right step. So we start with this. And when that is easy for us to observe, then we break it into two parts, lifting up the foot and then placing it. So when the foot's uh, lifting up is when the foot is starting to go up all the way until the time it finishes stop comes to when the upward movement comes to an end and at the moment of lifting we apply effort focused aim and observe steadfastly placing the foot isn't just touching the foot on the floor it's the whole movement starting from the very moment the foot starts to go down again it has to be, and uh, we have to watch the whole movement of dropping the foot down from the first uh, point, point of releasing the foot till it touches on the floor till until it's firmly on the floor so and we have to do this accurately when we're observing just left step right step this can be done quickly we we do this partly to relieve the stiffness and aching from sitting but when we do the two parts of lifting observing lifting and observing placing we should slow down a bit after we've walked about 20 minutes in this way observing lifting up and placing we can go to the last part do the, for the last 20 minutes if we've been practicing for about a week <coughs> then we can go to observing three parts to each step the three parts are lifting up the foot and then moving it forward to the point at which we're going to start start to drop it down and our steps shouldn't be very big they can be rather narrow so lifting up the foot and then moving it forward and then dropping it down and placing so each of these parts should be observed precisely we need to do this quite slowly not not quickly because if we're going to see the mind and matter the nama and rupa that are really there in these parts of the step we can only do that if we can follow the movements with our mind so therefore we have to lift the foot up slowly move it forward slowly place it slowly this is the most subtle part of the walking meditation observing the lifting moving and placing when we observe the rising and the falling as mentioned uh, we, when we start out we put the mind on the abdomen and the mind falls on the form the shape of the abdomen or the mind may f- notice the rising the expansion of the abdomen or the falling collapsing of the abdomen its manner or akara and then also the uh, one can also observe in the mo- <clears throat> in the moment of rising in the moment of falling the qualities that are there of stiffness or tension or movement when we start out we need to label and before our virya sati and samadhi or effort mindfulness and concentration are good then it's like this when we lift up the foot the mind falls on the form of the leg we see the shape 
or, uh, and with the moving also, what the mind sees or falls on is the form of the leg. And from time to time, the mind will notice the position or the manner of the leg that it's lifting up or that it's moving forward. And sometimes these will be mixed in. But when knowledge is arising, when we reach the point in the practice when knowledge arises, then we'll observe how when we lift up the foot, it gets light or it gets heavy and goes up. Or we'll we'll notice on the moving that there's pushing from behind or pulling from in front. And when the, when we drop the foot, when we observe dropping the foot, we'll notice how it gets heavy and goes down, or it go, gets light and goes down, or it becomes tight and goes down. So as Sayadaji said before, that when we put a morsel of food in our mouth and chew it, then the taste that's in the food that is really there you will know you will know it when you chew the food and if we observe the lifting the moving and the placing when knowledge is developing then one will know the qualities which are really there just like one knows the taste in the morsel of food This is the one job of the yogi to apply effort and aiming to observe at these moments of lifting, moving, and placing, to observe effectively, not to think about what is it in this moment of lifting, what are the qualities in the, mo- in the moment of moving or in the moment of placing. One's job is just to apply effort and aiming at the moment of lifting, moving, and placing. Just like we have to pay attention and chew the food in our mouth carefully. And if we do this, we'll know the taste of the food. So too, if we observe the lifting, the moving, and the placing carefully, we'll know the true nature that is like the flavor in uh, in the food at those moments. If one isn't careful in trying to observe, then no matter how long one practices, even if one practices a long time, one won't know anything. So one has to try to be careful to observe uh, the lifting, the moving, and the placing to try and do it as meticulously and continuously as possible. Just as when we sit, we need to observe every arising object, starting with the rising and the falling, with full mental energy. So too, in walking, we observe the lifting, the moving moving and the placing, with full mental energy. In sitting, we place the mind on the abdomen, because the abdomen is the place where the rising and the falling happen. The lifting, the moving, and the placing happen in the leg. So we put our attention on the leg. That's number one. Put our mind there. And if we're going to lift, then we put our mind on the whole lifting action. We have to apply energy. We can't be sluggish or slow about this. And if we apply our effort or mental energy, then the mind won't be sluggish. We have to make the mind alert and agile. And in addition, we need to have the quality of aiming, focused aiming. This is a jhanic quality. So as soon as the lifting occurs, we have to focus on it accurately. We have to aim properly. This is a jhanic quality. So we have to try to be accurate with our aim. The effort, 
the application of effort to get the mind to the leg at the moment the lifting happens overcomes laziness. And with this focused aiming, with aiming, then the mind won't shrink. It won't become uh, contracted. This shrink, shrunken and sluggish mind is called tina mida in Pali, or sloth and torpor. And aiming, the factor of aiming, is its direct opposite. So this aiming, we apply it and it takes the place of tina mida, sloth and torpor. So aiming is, as, as mentioned, is jhana, absorption. And so we, when there's lifting, when there's moving, when there's placing, we have to stick closely with that movement and observe it. When we observe directly, when we see the object head on, then this quality burns up, the quality of aiming burns up tina, mita, sloth and torpor. It uh, burns it up so it's not there. And it also burns up laziness. This is the literal meaning of jhana, that it burns up the defilements. So these, this factor of aiming must always be present, application of effort and aiming. If we apply energy so that it's strong, then sati follows. And with, with us, when sati is there, then samadhi also follows. And these three factors are what overcome the opposing qualities. It said, pajanika dhammi samethi di samato. The word samata comes from a sentence which says that it suppresses the opposing factors. And that's why it's called samata. If one doesn't apply effort to observe the object, then the mind becomes slack and laziness enters the mind as well as other defilements. But with the application of effort, sati follows, samadhi follows. And these factors together are able to suppress the qualities which oppose the wholesome mind. And these factors, these three factors of virya, sati, and samadhi together are called samatha. Please um, keep your hands still during the Dhamma talk. Don't fidget. Sorry. Visama bhumi bhage udaka. Okay. So when we break the one step into three parts and observe we can't do this quickly we should do the lifting the moving and the placing as slowly as possible then we'll be able to effectively observe what happens what is really there in each part and know it and the texts give an example of this uh, in the old days, people would have to fetch water uh, by putting it in jars and then uh, into a cart. And they'd have to push, push the cart from the place where they got the water uh, back to their house. So when you're trying to push a cart that has these jars full of water or pots full of water, over uneven ground you have to go slowly because if you go quickly over this uneven ground with your containers of water in the cart the water will spill out and when you get back to your home you'll only have about half so this is how we should do the slowest part of the walking as if we are pushing a cart full of water over uneven ground the left observing of the left step and the right step that we do during the first part of the walking this can be done quickly and lifting and placing can also be done a little bit quickly 
But the lifting, moving and placing should be done slowly, just like we're pushing this cart full of water uh, over uneven ground. So as now, according to this method described, if one observes in detail, and if the, the mind falls on the object of observation, then it won't run anywhere. It will be collected on the object. And we should think, well, what is what is it that is occurring in the mind at that moment? Is there loba, greed, occurring in the mind? No, there's not. The mind is pure without loba or greed. Is there any dissatisfaction, one form of dosa? Is there any anger? No, the mind will be free of these. It will be pure and clean. And it's to make the mind clean and pure that we apply effort and aiming to observe the arising object so that sati sticks to the object and the mind falls collectively on the object. This is bhavana, or sometimes called mental development. This is creating the pure mind and developing it, developing it so that it occurs more and more. If we can observe for one moment, uh, sorry, for one minute during the walking meditation, then there will be 60 moments where this clean mind, this pure mind is being developed. And this is quite a lot. A yogi with good observation like this, observing the lifting, the moving, and the placing, can, uh, can know the true nature just the way when we eat and we put a bit of food in the mouth and chew it carefully. With awareness, one knows the taste immediately, and so too does the yogi with good observation. In the lifting, the yogi knows right away the true nature, the sabhava, that is in the lifting. When moving the foot forward, the yogi knows the sabhava that exists in that moment. When placing the foot, too, the yogi knows right away the true nature that is in that action, placing. The yogi comes to know these very well. In order to know these tastes, these qualities that are like the taste in food, the flavors in food, to know these in the lifting, the moving, and the placing, one needs to go slowly, just as if one is <coughs> just <coughs> just as if one is pushing a cart full of water over uneven ground. The yogis have a responsibility to observe, applying effort and accurate aim at the, uh, on the objects. And if one does this, then within a few days, one will know what is there in the moment. If one is careless, then it doesn't matter how long one practices, one won't come to know anything. It's not good to just walk to relieve uh, stiffness. We need to do the walking in order to build samadhi. So we, we also, we build this during the walking meditation and we take it with us all the way to the sitting. When we get to our place, our sitting place, we stand there and observe the standing. And then slowly we start to go into a sitting down posture and the, the whole body should be observed as it goes down and the movements of, that we make uh, once we're down to move our arms or move our legs, all these things should be observed. When we're sitting, we, we put our back up straight and when there's no more adjustment needed to be made to the posture, then we can go to observing the rising and the falling. One should know the value of the work one is doing. 
This is very important because only if we value our work will we respect it. Practice, this practice is to make us truly human, to bring about a humane attitude, humane heart, and to develop, although we're human, to develop a knowledge that is a special human knowledge. This method makes our life high level. No matter how much education we have, no matter how many things we own, no matter how high a standard of living we have, all these things can't make us a true human. They can't make our attitude, our mind humane. They can't give us special human knowledge. Only if we practice this method of satipatthana can we do that. This is work that is for elevating our life. So we need to value it. And if we do value it, then we need to do it respectfully. And we also need to do it so that uh, it doesn't lose value. So we shouldn't do it carelessly or superficially. In one's being, to be able to observe what arises moment after moment without missing how we have to behave is although we have eyes to see we should behave as though we're blind that means that we shouldn't look here and there although we have ears which are perfectly capable of hearing we should behave as though we're deaf. As though, although we have knowledge, when we're practicing meditation, we should just have the attitude that we're going to follow what the teacher says, no matter how much we know. That means that we shouldn't put our, the things that we've learned or our skills to use during practice. And when we move, we should think of ourselves as though we're sick and weak. We shouldn't move just quickly getting up, quickly sitting down. When we do these things, when we move, we should move slowly the way a sick, weak person does. A person who's weak and sick, they stand up slowly. They sit down slowly. They can't move quickly. And although we are completely alive, when we experience pain, we should act as though we're a corpse. Because if we move, if we shift our posture, if we fidget, if we adjust every time we have discomfort, it won't be possible for concentration, samadhi, to arise. So we should just have the attitude that we're a corpse and not move at all. This is said in the text. And if we can practice like this, then within a few days, we will gain collectedness of samadhi and we will gain knowledge. Now, it's been 10 days already, and there are some yogis who are not able to say anything when they meet with the teacher. They're not able to say how they practice. So we should be able to say how we practice and what we come to know. These are things the yogi needs to be able to say. Having the opportunity to improve our life, to elevate our lives using this exact method Sayadaji urges, urges us all to cherish the work that we're doing and to work respectfully, carefully, meticulously so that in a few days, in a short time, we can gain samadhi and knowledge. That's all for today. Sadhu, sadhu. 
Sadhu 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 Sadhu